Democratic Republic of Congo sends UN forces packing. Weeks ago, nearly 50 precious African souls were lost in DR Congo because they protested the presence of UN peacekeeping forces in their country. They protested because they said the peacekeeping forces of the United Nations are not keeping any peace. Rather, they are sucking out whatever peace the people had left in that battered, mineral-rich, multi-gifted African country. Today, the government has summoned courage to ask the forces known as MUNUSCO to leave Congo immediately. What a great news it is! Makes you wonder what the UN and its forces have really been doing in Africa. As I have written before, I witnessed with my eyes how France humiliated Gbagbo of Ivory Coast who was anti-France, to install the current pro-France Alassane. They first started by sending French soldiers to create a buffer between government forces and rebels. Yes, rebels. They protected the rebels and prevented the government forces from attacking the rebels because they created and unleashed those rebel forces. Then they later teamed with the rebels to attack the government of Gbagbo, and the whole world just moped on, silence everywhere. No word from international bodies. No word from the UN or anyone else. And guess what? It was United Nations planes that were called in to bomb the government house and other strategic government and military infrastructure to stone ages. The UN fought in that war on the side of France, and that really makes you wonder right. You see, UN is owned by the unipolar world order and the gang of colonial powers who have run much of our world till this day. These are the puppet masters, the slave masters, the ones who took over Africa, enslaved it physically and later on psychologically. So when they left physically and told us that slavery was over, which is a lie, and told us we now have independence, which is also a lie, what they did to continue to keep us in slavery psychologically was. They created all these bodies like the UN, ICC, Interpol, and so on, to ensure that whenever any one of their colonies or slaves get out of line, they send these attack dogs after you. So before you see UN forces anywhere in Africa, most likely, there is a colonial interest that must be protected alongside the foreign army of those colonizing nations. In Mali, where they were kicked out, the accusation is the same. And the colonial force they helped was France. In Burkina Faso, it's the same. In Niger, and pretty much anywhere else you find them, there is always some colonizer they are providing cover for. As our African resources are being stolen and shipped to the West, either for free or for pennies. This is where the Hegelian dialectic comes in. Problem, reaction, solution. How can a peacekeeping force show up if there is no chaos that will enable them restore order out of chaos? There has to be a problem first, manufactured. Then there has to be an outcry for help then. There has to be the peacekeepers and the re-colonizing army on ground to provide something that looks like a solution, which is never a solution. To hear that they are finally leaving the Democratic Republic of Congo is sweet music to my ears. It seems as if a huge scale has fallen off the eyes of our people in Africa, and I'm a strong believer in the fact that Africa is on its way out of slavery for good, and my generation is about to witness a freer, stronger, and more independent and buoyant Africa. Kudos to the authorities in Democratic Republic of Congo. We the youth of Africa are proud of what you have done, and we will stand with you through this process. Viva Mama Africa! Africa is winning. Africa will win this, and will win it big. God bless Mazi Namdikanu, God bless Africa, God bless Biafra, and may God bless Russia. Have a blessed day, stay safe, and stay tuned for more updates. On Wednesday, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's president, Felix Tshisekedi, demanded the swift withdrawal of a significant UN peacekeeping mission that has been operating in the country for almost 25 years. Speaking at the United Nations General Assembly, he said it's time for his country to take full control of its destiny and be the main actor in its stability. Felix Tshisekedi's pronouncement comes just weeks after the Seven Nation East African community extended the mandate of a regional force deployed to quell violence in eastern DRC. The final departure of the UN peacekeeping mission has been at the center of debates on the DRC's future for years and a source of tension and populist rhetoric in the nation. Shesakidi claimed that despite the efforts of about 15,000 peacekeepers, the mission has not succeeded in confronting the rebellions and armed conflicts, nor in protecting the civilian populations. The Security Council approved a plan for a gradual withdrawal of UN personnel from the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 2020, establishing guidelines for handing over responsibility to Congolese forces. The plan was to begin withdrawal of the peacekeeping force in December 2024, 
but in September, the DRC asked the Security Council to start the process in December 2023. This falls during the time when Shizakiti is running for re-election. Shizakiti, the DRC's president, said at the UN General Assembly that it was illusory and counterproductive to continue to cling to the maintenance of the peacekeeping mission to restore peace in his country. The United States, on the other hand, warned at a Security Council meeting in June against a hasty withdrawal of the mission, assessing that the country was not prepared to part with the peacekeeping mission at the end of 2023. The discussions come as the United Nations has faced a series of attacks and demonstrations against its mission in the country. At least 56 people were killed and dozens wounded in a crackdown on an anti-UN protest in eastern city of Goma in the DRC in August, so the president of the DRC believes that the swift withdrawal of the mission is necessary to ease tensions in the country. Another protest in July 2022 resulted in more than 15 deaths, including three peacekeepers in Goma and the city of Butembo. The east of the DRC has been plagued by militia violence for 30 years as a result of local conflicts that erupted in the 1990s and 2000s. With an annual budget of about $1 billion, the UN peacekeeping mission in the region, which has been operational since 1999, is one of the biggest and most expensive in the world. The UN peacekeeping mission has been criticized for failing to stop the conflict in the DRC. People anticipate that the UN will protect them if their government is unable to do so, but most Africans believe that the UN is useless because it has consistently failed to stop attacks or adequately respond to them. We have seen their indifference during the crisis in Rwanda and other places too. What do you think of the DRC's decision? Do you think that the UN peacekeeping mission should remain in the DRC? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you like this video, share it with friends and family, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our exciting videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.